Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is Brandon Clements and welcome back to another video here on Glassian. Today I'm excited because we're going to take a look at Blender uh, 2.82a with Octane inside of it. So I'm going to show you how to download Octane and we're also going to show you how to go from uh, Blender, uh, from Blender Cycles EV to Octane and how to manage your scene and you know, how would you even do that? So we're going to figure that out today. Uh, first, we're going to go to Otoy's website. So let's go ahead and uh, see how we can download everything. So I'm just going to go to Otoy.com. Okay, and here we are um, on the Otoy website. You're going to go down and you're going to download uh, Blender. So um, this version of Octane, it's, it's pretty crazy. Um, they actually package Octane into Blender itself. So you're downloading a version of Blender and then you're downloading this server. And so what you'll do is you'll just come down here and you'll say Blender um, Octane if, after you in install it, of course. And then uh, you'll come down to your uh, little tray and you should see this Octane Enterprise going right now. So um, you'll want to search for, uh, let's see, Octane um, Server right here. Uh, run that. It will pop up in your tray. Double click your um, Octane little gear. I don't even know what it is. I think it's a gear. <laughs> but uh, double click that uh, you'll need to activate it and then once you're up and running you will have uh, when you come over to your render settings you will have octane here so um, today's video is going to be kind of short um, i just want to show you some different features and uh, why i think it's so cool and um, how you can go back and forth so uh, let's just jump in i have octane set as the render engine right now um, one big thing to uh, to know is you have this display device. Uh, if it's set to sRGB, um, I believe it looks a little flat. And uh, that's still something that I'm um, kind of tweaking. But uh, I, I just go ahead and set that to none. Um, and this is more indicative of something I would see in uh, other DCCs with Octane or just um, with Octane standalone itself. So once you actually render this out, uh, you would hit F12. And then you can come over to the compositor. So um, it's rendering here in the viewport, but let's just go to compositing and you can see that you can take the, uh, the actual image, uh, run it through, uh, some color correction, glare, uh, I have a color balance here and then I have it set to my viewer, which is the window behind these nodes and uh, a composite window, which I just kind of opened, uh, in Blender. If you want to make any type of window, you just come over here to the crosshair and then top left, you can choose whatever you want. Um, so you can make any kind of configuration you want. Uh, so to, to get rid of that, uh, what I would do is just come over here, right click and then say, um, well, we don't want to split. We want to right click in between the two windows. We want to join and we say join and then uh, we'll just join this way and it'll shove everything um, over to the side. So yeah, this is, this is our basic uh, compositing window and here's, the actual image itself. So if I go image to uh, composite, you'll see only this window changes. This is our actual Octane render. Um, so, you know, this is, if you're familiar with Octane, uh, you can see that I have the kernel type set to path trace. Um, all of these settings should be very familiar to you. Um, I'm not gonna go into detail in some of these videos. You can see some of the ones I've done in Cinema 4D uh, on the channel. I do have adaptive sampling turned on and I, I have a generous amount of uh, samples hitting this 2048. Probably doesn't need that much just for this simple scene. Um, so the, the main, um, you know, settings that you want to change are just under the octane kernel itself. Uh, you can see I'm limiting the diffuse bounces and then I also have the GI clamp turned up. So we're trying to eliminate some fireflies. The cool thing is, is when you come over to like, let's say the layout tab and you, uh, you have viewport rendering turned on. Um, I had built this scene using uh, Archipack Pro, I believe, uh, which is a add-on. Um, so I built the walls, the windows, everything is completely uh, procedural in a way. It's, it's more like Booleans and you can save different objects and uh, that's another video. We'll get back to that. Um, but I did uh, use uh, this resource, which is called Blender Kit. And if you come up to Preferences, and then uh, add-ons, which popped up on my other screen. Um, you can see I have Node Wrangler enabled, which is uh, super important and very, very cool. But uh, you can go and type Blender Kit. 
and you can see that it's an asset li library. So um, let me just show you really quick what this does. If I turn on the eye, I can search for different beds. And the one that I've used is created by this artist. Thank you so much. I think it's an amazing model. Um, and it looks great here in Octane. Uh, but then if I search for something like, let's just say, uh, if I can spell plant, uh, plant, there we go. Um, you can drop these in. And once you drop them in, you want to actually uh, link th uh, them to your scenes you have the import method here uh, I, I did have it set to link but then I just put it as a pin so it would live in my uh, blender scene and I have free only enabled you can pay and yes you can upload your own models it's very very cool um, so anyways that's another video uh, but you can hit in on the keyboard to uh, pop that in and out but as you can see, like the, the viewport is amazing because you can just go to viewport shading and, and just kind of rotate this and it it converges everything really, really quickly. Um, I was talking to Jules, the CEO of, uh, of Otoy about this and I'm, I'm just really impressed by um, actually how fast it is. Uh, and I mean, I, it's, it's fast in other DCCs as well, but uh, in Blender, it feels more artistic and kind of freeing because, you know, you kind of have these different view modes um, and everything just kind of hums uh, really, really well together. So, you know, this is the actual just default viewport shading. Uh, but if I come over to my uh, shading tab, let's dive into some of the nitty gritty of how you can switch back and forth. So if you go into your world, this is where you're going to set up things like HDRIs or what cor color the world is. Um, this is going to be a trend you're going to see is on the output nodes. I have one for cycles. I have one for EV and then I have one for octane. And uh, once you're in octane mode, <laughs> we'll call it octane mode. When you switch it, um, you hit shift a and you are greeted with all of the uh, different, uh, you know, different uh, materials, tools. I mean, you can see them listed here, uh, but you can just search for things like, let's just say image. You have image texture, image tile, float and alpha. Um, so searching is really, really handy. One thing I want to know is let's say you use like the universal shader a lot, uh, like I do. Um, so you come down here and, uh, universal, I am blind. You right click and you say, add it to your favorites. And then you hit Q on your keyboard and your quick favorites come up. But you know, your quick favorites are different depending on what viewport you are hovered over. So, um, that is so awesome that I don't have any quick favorites here in the, the outliner view, but you know, your sculpting views, your UV editing, uh, texture painting, animation, you all have different quick favorites, which is amazing. You just right click and you just add it. It's a small thing, but it goes a long way. Um, so you can see that I've added the image. Uh, I, I have a spherical transform and then I'm manipulating it here with just another transform node. This should be an, uh, very familiar if you're into Octane. Uh, then you have the environment and the visible environment. Of course, the visible environment is a, a higher um, exposure, just so we can kind of mimic what you would see with cameras. And I do have some color correction there to uh, goof this up and get it to looking like how I want it. Uh, but then this texture up here in these nodes, um, all four of those are contributing to the actual lighting um, and it's similar in cycles. Uh, you have a light path with a camera ray. It goes into the factor of what you actually get for lighting and what you actually get for your background. Uh, same, well, not same with Eevee, but uh, I'll show you. I'll show you Eevee when we get to Eevee. Okay. So let's go ahead and we're in object mode right now, but I'll select the um, the actual sheet there and then go into object, and you can see that it's set to comforter. Also, with it selected, you can see I have multiple materials attached to that one object in the scene. The one thing we want to look at is just Octane. You can see I was playing around with different um, uh, kind of different nodes, but this is just a simple gradient going into the albedo. And everything is here that you are familiar with if you've used Octane. Okay, so nothing really more to say about that. Let's go ahead and switch over to Cycles. Um, so since I have everything set up with these output nodes, all I have to do is just uh, flip over to cycles. You can see everything is compiling and changing. And then I'll come down here to the uh, color management, set this back to sRGB, set this back to filmic, 
and I had this set to medium high contrast. So the color management is a little bit different going back and forth. Uh, nothing too bad though. And you can see here that, um, I mean, even with cycles, the, uh, the interactive feedback here is, is just great. So it's very nice to just kind of flip back and forth. Um, there's a lot of different helper tools that I actually didn't cover um, with Octane. So let's just flip it back to Octane. It's just so easy to, to kind of go back and forth. It's, it's really, really awesome. So um, let's just change this again. Um, and if you right click in the viewport, you'll get a Octane helper menu. So what you want to do is search for, uh, I'm going to do it right now, Octane helper blender. Uh, you should be on this guy's GitHub. Um, so thank you so much to the author. Uh, what this is is an add-on. You can right-click and get this uh, material window. Uh, you can also convert, um, you know, octane or universal materials to glossy materials. Um, some really nice workflow enhancements here, and highly recommend that. Um, again, if you haven't installed add-ons before, preferences, add-ons, um, you'll go to install and just click on the zip file. You don't have to unzip it. Just click the zip file, and it will do it for you. Uh, Blender is really smart on how it actually adds that. Um, so another really important thing to show. Also the area lights inside of Octane and Blender, uh, they're done with just simple planes and uh, texture emissions. And you can hide all of that in the viewport by coming down to the object properties. And then you have uh, camera visibility and shadow visibility that you'll want to tick uh, for your different lights. You can see I have them hidden as well with uh, portal materials. And uh, if you use the add-on, you can go to environment, uh, light manager, and this is super cool. Um, you can just add whatever type of light and set the parameters, hit okay, and it adds it to your scene. Um, so that covers kind of shaders and lighting a little bit um, in Octane with a kind of glossed over render settings. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, look at Eevee. Um, so I'm uh, anticipating that some of the viewers are going to be a mix between uh, Octane viewers, uh, people who are interested in EV, people who are interested in cycles. So uh, kind of bear with me. And if I don't answer something, definitely leave a comment in the comment section below. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch this back to uh, Filmic. And as you can see, this looks really, really nice. And this is all completely real-time rasterization. Um, now there is some... Uh, nice secret sauce that the blender foundation has put into here uh, in terms of like we have uh, this irradiance volume which if I turn this on if you guys have used uh, Oct or sorry Unreal Engine and Unity before uh, and you have dynamic movable objects uh, you're probably familiar with the term light probes or in Unreal Engine volumetric light maps um, those ideas are similar to the irradiance volume inside of uh, blender uh, so it, what you want to do is go to your EV settings and then go down to indirect lighting and you can bake the indirect lighting into these um, spherical elements, if you will. So as you move things around, it will pick up the indirect lighting based on the, the lights that you have actually set up in your scene. Um, and then you can bake cube maps, which is uh, very reminiscent of something that you would do in Unre Unreal or Unity. Um, you just add a reflection cube map to your scene. Uh, you you know hit shift A, you can come down to uh, light probe reflection cube map, uh, planar reflections, and then you have irradiance volume here, uh, and of course you can delete the light cache, which I'm not going to do now because I'm happy with it, uh, but you then you can actually go through and bake it. Um, one thing to note if you come down to the irradiance volume data, I do have this set to a higher resolution just so I can um, show off how cool the indirect lighting looks. Um, so yeah, I, I think Eevee is, is absolutely fantastic. It's great for uh, pre-visualizing elements before you get them into Unity or Unreal if you're doing interactive apps. Um, it's great for just previewing things really quickly with clients looking over your shoulder. Um, you can see that the shadows right now, if I come into the, the EV settings and go to shadows, I have high uh, bit depth turned on, also with uh, soft shadows enabled. So. Um, you can tick this guy on, and I have a high cascading size. Um, without going into too much detail, cascading shadows is basically uh, dividing your shadows into different map sizes based on the camera's location. So if you are close to something, you get something that looks really great. And if you're far away, 
it's far away. It doesn't have to look, it doesn't have to look pretty. Um, and then you can also turn on things like screen space uh, reflections, which um, I didn't have on, but I just turned that on there. Um, you have subsurface scattering, uh, depth of field, um, you have bloom, and also ambient occlusion, which just kind of uh, helps darken some of those crevices uh, a bit more. So in the world settings for Eevee, uh, you can see that it's really bright. I have it set to 200, uh, similar to what it is here for the Cycles uh, viewport. Um, I did set this down really low, baked the lighting, and then just turned it up for the effect of having the indoor high exposure um, going outdoor. Um, also with the glass, I did something um, kind of cheeky. If I come in here to the glass, changes to object, um, then we can actually see for the material viewport here, I have this different factor slider. Um, and this is going between like the glass BSDF and just a straight transparent material. So I'm just kind of mixing these two just to get something that looks uh, like the glass that I want. So maybe like 1.59 for IOR. And, you know, real time refraction is always an issue. It never looks, it never looks amazing. Um, it always kind of looks faked in a way. Uh, but you know what? That's just in the current state that we are right now I, i'm sure we'll we'll get into some really awesome techniques later on um but you can see as i flip through these they're not that different and if you do check out uh, my instagram which is linked in the uh description video description of this video uh, you can see i did this in unreal engine uh, cycles ev octane um, i pretty much ran it through all the different render engines they're all super capable it's all a very simple scene it's not like i'm rendering transformers over here or something but uh <laughs> you can you can see like that they all have um, amazing capabilities and i i love using this uh inside of of blender again with the uh, compositing tab if i go ahead and run another render with ev you'll see how fast it is it's Literally, oh yeah, it's a rasterization. It just draws the actual pixels uh, from the from the actual triangles in the scene. So um, there's really no light computation at all, uh, which makes it really fast. So um, you can kind of see here, if I go ahead and take this up to the uh, composite, we are viewing the render result here in the image viewer, um, and this is the actual first slot. So um, it's it's just so great to come in here and um, uh, tweak some of these values and you know maybe we want a little bit more blue um and seeing that update you saw the little bar at the bottom that um that kind of goes through and tries to do the actual processing and there you go um so i i would love to kind of get into more things especially denoising and post denoising and cycles but i feel like that is uh, just another uh, multiple videos in and of itself so um, I'm going to go ahead and leave you hanging with just Blender is awesome. Octane is awesome. I mean, every DCC that you jump into nowadays is just amazing. Maya, Cinema 4D, Houdini, Blender, they're all good. They're all amazing. I mean, Blender is completely open source. So if you are someone who does more 2D type of stuff and you want to get into 3D, there's no barrier of entry. If you're young and you know, you, you're in college or high school, there's no barrier of entry. You just download it. They don't even ask for your email. It's just, it's there for you to actually experiment with. So let me know in the comment section below if you guys liked this video, if you thought it was helpful just to kind of see a 30,000 foot elevation of, of what it looks like switching between different render engines and, and using Octane. Um, let me know if you want to see a intro to Blender, uh, maybe or an intro to Octane and Blender and not all three. <laughs> um, but it was fun to make this video. It was fun to test this scene and just see what the workflow is like um, going in and out of Blender in multiple render engines. So I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. Um, please uh, like this video. If you liked it, uh, leave a comment section. Uh, leave a comment in the comment section <laughs> over what you guys want to see. But that will do it for now. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.